Okay, so we start discussing. I'm sorry, we start discussing the 2012 <clears throat> uh, in the last week. So uh, we discuss up to the point uh, where we discuss the first question. All the ten parts were discussed last week. So today we are going to start from the second question. Right. So um, it is the Excel question. The following spreadsheet segment shows the distribution of dengue cases reported in 18 selected cities for three months, right? So then they are asking you to uh, answer the questions using this particular spreadsheets that they are providing to you. Use the above spreadsheet segment to answer the following questions. So you can see in the column A, they are maintaining a particular number for cities, which is from one to 60, one to 18, right? And uh, they have the uh, column B to recognize the cities and CDE for the uh, uh, record the dengue cases, right, by month. So the very first one is asking about, write down the cell range, which represents the data for month of July in all 18 cities, yeah. So month of July, all 18 cities. So they are asking this particular cell range, this particular cell range. So the uh, starting cell is this, C3, and the ending cell is C20. So C3 colon C20 can be taken as the answer for the first one. So C3 colon C20, right? So in the marking scheme for the, uh, this particular cell range, they have given you 2.5 marks for saying C3 colon C20, right? Right, and uh, what they are suggesting here is if you use C3 to C20, it also can be taken as a correct one, right? That is what they are mentioning here. So you can use two. Right, or you can use double dots. You can use two, you can use double dots, you can use a hyphen, or you can use this arrow, right? So C3, two or double dots or hyphen or arrow uh, to C20, the most appropriate way is that you are having colon <coughs> as the range. Right, so the next question, Write the formula with single function, with a single function that has to be entered in cell C21 to display the total number of cases in all 18 cities for the month of July. So total number of cases. So they are asking you to write the things onto this particular cell, right? So if you are going, what, what you are going to write. So they are asking the total number of cases. So that means you need to take the total of it. So they are asking a single function for you to write. So if you are writing a single function, then it should be equal sum. Then you can say the range is C3 to, C3 to C20. So you can say C3 colon C20. Right, so that will be the single function that you can use. <clears throat> so if, if someone wants, they can write it like equal sum C3 comma C4 comma C5 comma likewise until C20, but it will, it will be a very lengthy <clears throat> uh, function, but still that can be taken as a correct answer, right? If we go by the uh, marking scheme, as you can see, so you can say equal sum C3 colon C20, right? 
and they have said uh, plus some C3 colon C20 as a correct one as well, but it's better we stick to the, uh, the way we know, right? So, <coughs> That's going to be the uh, answer for the second one, 2.5 marks. Right, and the third one is talking about write the formula with single function that has to be entered in cell C22, that means over here, to display the maximum of cases among all 18 cities for month July. Again, you can take equal max, the function name is max, Again, the range C3 colon C20, quite easy. And the very last one is asking, assume that the formula with single function required to obtain the average value of dengue cases for the month of July is entered in cell C23. That means over here, if the formula copied to cell D23, that means it will be copied over here. What will be the formula contained in cell D23? So it's about the taking the average value. So it's going to be equal average. And the range is going to be not C3 to C20. It's, it's, it's going to be D3 colon D20. Because when we are copying it, it copies according to the relative cell reference, not the absolute cell reference, because there is no absolute cell reference in part over here. So the answer is going to be equal average D3 colon D20. So if I go by the marking scheme for the third, this is going to be your answer. So 2.5 marks. And for fourth, it's equal average D3 colon D20. Again, 2.5 marks. All right, so that's how the second question went. And who got 10 out of 10? It's a very easy question, people. <coughs> yes. Okay, Himitri, very good. Right, okay, Minha. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, do I, is it Minha or Miha? I, I, I really, uh, are we, uh, it's, we, we pronounce the N, right? All right, right, okay. Right, okay, Minha. So, uh, Tamadi, yeah, that's a very good mark, Tamadi. So, others who got nine? All right. Okay, right, okay. There are a few, very good. Onetra is handy. Okay, so moving to the third question, the database one, who has done this? Okay, so let's go with this. The following three tables are part of school management information system that stores details of teachers and their subjects. One teacher may teach more than one subject and one subject may be taught by more than one teacher. That's how they say. So it is asking list two primary keys together with their corresponding table names. Yeah, what we can easily say is in the teacher's table, we can say teacher ID as a primary key. In subjects table, we can say subject code as the primary key, right? If you are going to go to the teacher subject one, we, we have to take both subject code and teacher ID as the primary key. So when it comes to the answers, yeah, here's what they have says. Teacher table, teacher ID, subject table, subject ID, teacher subject table, teacher ID plus subject code. So any two of these things will give you four marks. Right, and, and look at this note, people. Correct spelling is required for both corresponding field names, table names. Marks award 
with or without a space in field names. Yeah. So that is critical. Since they are providing you the details in this, right? Since they are providing you the details fully, you have to go with the exact spellings, right? Because your answer is on the paper, right? Make him a pain, you know. Make him margin, I can the end. Right, so they have given you four marks. It's quite huge for one particular part, right? And the second one, briefly explain one disadvantage that would occur if a single table is used instead of three tables for storing the data. So we can clearly say data redundancy would occur or data duplication or repeating data, or like you can say data anomalies are there like inserting data will be difficult, updating data will be difficult, deleting data will be difficult, right? So, and again, it will lead to the excess storage as well as inefficient searching uh, uh, kind of activities, right? So they are asking, uh, yeah, so they say one mark for the disadvantage and one mark for the explanation, right? So in the, uh, uh, this particular point, they ask briefly explain one disadvantage. So it says briefly explain, right? So you have to tell, right? So these are the uh, facts. or the reasons, and then you have to say what kind of, how the uh, explanation should go on, right? So you can say data redundancy would occur. Uh, therefore, this will uh, uh, lead or this will cause uh, excess storage as well as the task or like the uh, searching purposes or searching things will be inefficient uh, to perform uh, such thing, right? Or to, to perform search and add or modify the data, right? So one mark for pointing out what is the disadvantages and one mark for the explanation. Yeah. Okay, uh, my, that is a power cut. Uh, happens over here people unfortunately my battery is remaining only 26 percent so let's go uh, as we can meanwhile i think uh, there will be electricity right in the third part they are asking what is meant by a foreign key illustrate your answer using the above table yeah now uh, how we are going to uh, define any a foreign key and how we are going to illustrate it using this example. So the teach ID here is a primary key and teach ID here alone is going to be a foreign key, right? And uh, subject code here is a primary key and subject code here, if you take it alone, it's going to be a foreign key. So foreign key means what? A field which acting as a primary key when it is presented in a different table as a normal field, we call that particular field a foreign key, right? So if you are getting the, uh, if you are going to give the example, you can say teach ID in the teacher subject table is a foreign key because teach ID is the primary key of the teacher's table. As well as you can say subject code of the teacher subject table is a foreign key since it is the primary key of the subject's table. Right, that idea should be there. Right, so if I go with the marking scheme, it says a foreign key is a column or columns in one table whose values are the same as the primary key in another table. 
right? This creates a relationship between the tables foreign key related uh, foreign key related tables or any kind of thing like you should have that you should give that idea primary key and the foreign key are the components which helps to create a relationship in between tables right and when you are giving the examples it should be like teach id fields for teacher subject table and subject code for teacher subject table right so it says marks awarded if illustrations are given by drawing the given tables with illustrations yeah even uh, you can got the things uh, by illustrating this thing you see the tables right so anyway for the definition it gives you two marks for example it gives you two marks right they were just asking only one example right illustrate your answer using about tables yes just one example is enough so for uh, for the for this definition or like for this explanation it is two marks and for any one of these uh, examples you are going to have two marks right so four marks is there okay so see how much you got out of 10 right first part four marks second part two marks and third part again four marks okay so you better put how much you got out of 10 and going to the third question i'm sorry for the fourth question anyone who has done the fourth Okay, right. right, so in the fourth question, it is asking, consider the URL, http colon double slash www.schoolnet.lk. Write down the protocol, service, and the top level domain. So what are these things? Protocol, it's http, hypertext transfer protocol. Service, it's the www and the top level domain is this dot lk right so in the marking scheme i think they have given only uh, three marks for this hold on yeah right so the protocol http service www top level domain lko dot lk and for that, they have given you three marks. And in the second part, it says online shopping can be defined as the act of purchasing products or services over the internet. Briefly explain two benefits of online shopping. So the major benefit that we can take is like we save the time, right? And there, are, there can be many more benefits, right? Like the marketing scheme says, can purchase goods and services at reduced price due to a reduction of overheads, such as shop space, electricity, staff salary, etc., etc. Can buy uh, on all twenty-four hours, right? On uh, in, in like like in any time. So buy goods from anywhere, right? So it doesn't matter where you are going to stay. So if they allow us to uh, have that. Uh, a particular particular uh, thing from the uh, market at any time so we can just uh, have it right and digital products can be obtained instantly right so like uh, if you are purchasing a particular license key for a software so it, it will be emailed instantly so you won't be able to stay until it is arrived so any one of these so because it is asking uh, yeah they're asking two benefits so like any two of those things and if you got any alternative answers just let me know people right those there can be things which is correct as well right so any
right? So any particular reason, it will give you two marks. And uh, in the third one, they are asking a person says that his credit card detail have been stolen and used by someone else after online shopping, such as three safety measures that he can take to prevent such unauthorized access. Right, so what are the safety measures? Right, so what you are going to do is this particular person says that his credit, or, uh, credit card detail have been stolen. Right, so they are asking to what are things to be done to prevent that. Right, so these reasons can be taken as the prevention methods. Use a credit card with online fraud protection. Only use secure websites because HTTPS indicates a secure website, the protocol. Do not use your credit card at unknown, untrusted website. Yes, because we never know when they are going to hand them over to another. Right, so likewise, one of these reasons can be taken. Right, and uh, not one, neither. They, they were asking about three, right? Yeah, three safety measures. Okay. So any three of these things, if, if you've written anything new, just let me know. If you haven't write anything, please uh, go through the facts that it can cause. Right, so if there are any person who has not written this, it's time for you to write. I'll give you one or two minutes for you to copy the things down. Okay, anyone who is still writing the points from this? So it says one mark for each, so three marks for any three points. All right, so moving to the next question, it says in the following diagram, message two is the equivalent of message one. A certain technology is used to convert message one to an unreadable format which can only be read by the intended recipient. What would you call this technology showing in the middle box with A? So we call it what? The encryption process, right? So the answer is going to be encryption or else you can take it as encoding as well. Even though encoding is slightly different from encryption, Still, it is giving you some uh, safety uh, details. Right, so, ah, yes, and again, uh, people here, if you say encryption, it's two mark. If you say encoding, it's only one mark. So that means most appropriate one is encryption. Okay, so we are done with the fourth question. Yeah, people, how about it? Is that clear so far? All right. Uh, 
Okay. So who has done the next question? The fifth one, which is the programming related one. Who has done it? Oh, no one. Ah, Himidri, you have that. Okay. Right, so the first part is saying, draw the relevant flowchart segment to represent the following scenario. So they're asking only the segment. So, how the segment can be done? So, flow will come. Right, so if it rains today, so then that should be here. Right, so you can go it. We can either change the question or we can just ask. The trains. And it may have a years path as well as a more path. And if it is years, it says go to the library. So it's an output. Hold on, people. Then is doing some hard time. Right. This is if it is yes. This is if it is no. Right. So this is going to be the next one. And we are not having a flow like this, right? So later these flows can be connected, right? So the output or the segment is going to be like this. Does it rain today? The question is asked. It is yes, go to the library. If it is no, go to the playground. So if you have these kind of segments, you can give four marks straight away. And in the second one, they are asking, a postman is required to deliver letters to 150 houses. Uh, Himidiri, uh, do a, uh, it's better you not to, uh, since they are they have asked about the segment. Uh, we really don't know what happens at the top and the and the bottom. Like it's only the only this part they have provided. So it's better you not to have a start and end. Got it, Himidiri. Right. So the second part says a postman is required to deliver. A postman is required to deliver letters to 150 houses. He collects the mailbag from the post office and travels Can from first house to the um no so, so I'll give you the papers. Papers? Yes. That might be a good idea. Then you can or else you can write it on the board. 
And uh, yeah, if there are uh, letters to a particular house, he delivers them to the letterbox. Otherwise, there is no letters, he skips the house. The following flowchart represents the above scenario. Write down the appropriate label to fill the blanks, A, B, C, D. Your answer should be exact variable names as in the flowchart. So here it says total house, they take it at, uh, equals to uh, zero, right? And the total house should be less than some amount, some number amount, right? So since he's saying 150, A is going to be 150. And if this side is yes, definitely this side is going to be no. All right. Then it has, are there letters to this house? So again, C become yes. Right, so if the letters are no, then you are going to skip the house. If it is there, deliver to letter. Then total house, even here, total house. Yes. Right, total houses equals total houses plus one. So D is going to be total houses. Right, so let's uh, check with the marking scheme. Yeah, for having this segment, you are given four marks. And uh, a is 150, B is no, C is yes, total houses, it is. All right, so this is how the marks have went. Two plus two is four, four plus, four plus two is six. Six plus four is the 10, so see how much you got out of 10. Okay, moving to the sixth one. Ah, and again, uh, uh, how much do you got? Yes, people, people who have done that. Okay, okay, Minha, that's good. Kimitri, that's very good. Anitra, that's good. All right, moving to the sixth question. Timeline allows investigating, investigation, monitoring, and management of patients from remote location, right? List one advantage of telemedicine in addition to the remote accessibility. So for when it comes to the telemedicine, there are many different uh, benefits right availability of more expertise remote surgery low cost due to less traveling right uh, we can access foreign or distance expertise or doctors right so any one of those any one of those can be taken the marks as one Right, so the advantages of telemedicine. So the second question, part B, list one challenge in using telemedicine. So the challenge is what? The legal issues, cost of the equipment, because we have to uh, make the things, or like uh, sometimes we have to make an ambulance with a lot of equipment inside it, because for telemedicine, 
emergency telemedicine is a must. So we will be able to attend to a particular point as soon as possible. Right, and transmission and connectivity charges, obtaining patient medical parameters such as blood pressure, temperature, those kind of things. Payment methods will be complicated, so those kind of things can be taken. Right, so for that fact, again one mark. So the next question is one of your friend, one of your friends offer a copy of unlicensed software CD to you. Do you agree or disagree? Justify your answer. Yeah. What we can say is we are disagree because if it is licensed software, it's better you use the licensed version. If it is not the licensed version, then only uh, like at, at some particular point it will uh, connect or it will uh, detect it as a uh, unauthorized one or like a uh, unpermitted one. Right, so your answer can have these kind of points. It is no is going to be the answer. They ask you whether you are going to use that. No, and justification for saying no, one mark is given separately. Right, then you can say it is illegal or unethical. Right, so one plus one, two marks is given. Right, so the third part is asking briefly explain two examples for computer controlled system in agriculture. Right, so we got a lot. So here it says some of these things. Right, computer controlled greenhouse for controlling environment parameters such as temperature and humidity. Computerized concentrate feed, feeder for dairy cows, computer control equipment, right? Those kind of things can be taken. Automated computer control, pest control, computer control drip irrigation, right? So these things are possible now, right? Even when it comes to drip irrigation, we can say what we call a main particular uh, distribution is there and then like time to time that central system will allow the entire uh, drip system to have their water if they want. Right so here like they are asking for two things so two marks because we are having two things. So the last one, the question is, e-learning helps one to learn at his or her own space. Uh, compared to additional classroom-based learning. Okay, do you agree with this statement? Briefly explain your answer. Now, this kind of a question can argue to both the side. You can say it is yes. You can say it is no. Right, so this is how we are going to uh, justify it. So, first you have to say yes. Right, cloud access materials and learn from anywhere, anytime, just time to learn for it to be learners. A convenience, put a just learning pace according to the learners need or ability. Right, and uh, <clears throat> apart from that, yeah, so you can say when we use an LMS, the competition will be low. Right, those kind of uh, examples can be taken. All right, so this is the very last one that is regarding the system development life cycle. Anyone who has done this? 
Okay, so the first part is asking Pumi tells someone that she found an interesting web article on the history of internet. Although Pumi could remember the title of the of article as evolution of internet, she does not remember the web address of the site, but write down the steps that someone should follow in order to find his article from the internet. So how we are going to go generally, we start the browser, we take to google.com and we search with the given uh, particular name, right? And then uh, you will be able to uh, manage the things, right? And uh, With the help of search engine, it is easy to find which particular URL or which particular web address or which particular website that contains this document. Right, so the marking scheme says open a browser or without that you can directly say find the search engine, search using keyword or time key, select the appropriate link. Right, and they have given an alternative method as well. Go to Pumi's computer, search the appropriate browsing history, find the appropriate link. Both can be taken. So three marks for the explanation. And then the second part is asking Udara is planning to implement a new library information system for his school using the system development lifecycle methodology as shown in following diagram. Write the name of pace X, Y, and EZ. So identification of problem is there, feasibility study. This, this is not in your syllabus now, but it doesn't matter. We have learned it about one or two steps. Feasibility study, system analysis. Uh, X is going to be system designing and development is there. Then system testing, implementation, then after maintenance. So X is going to be system design. Y is going to be uh, system testing or like the testing. Is it is going to be the maintenance. Right, so yeah, the design or system design by is testing is it is maintenance. Right, so part B. Part B is asking list two types of feasibility that he needs to access during feasibility study phase. You can't uh, answer this question, people, because it is not in it, it's not there in your syllabus. So you can have that two marks, right? So for part C, these three methods that Udara could use to collect relevant information during the system analysis phase. Yeah, you can use observations, you can use questionnaires, you can use interviews, you can refer the related documents, right? So likewise, you can uh, propose any three of those, right? So yeah, for three answers, they, are, they have given two marks to you, right? So each and this part C takes two marks, part B takes two marks, and part A takes three marks. And then the first, Roman number one, part is getting three marks again. So see how much you got out of 10 and uh, calculate the total as well, how much you got out of 100, because we are done with 2012. And meanwhile, Has everyone uh, done with 2013, the MCQ? Who has not done the 2013 MCQ? 
Now you, it's it's better you always keep a question paper, one question paper at once than our position, right? So like, if we are discussing two thirteen, get ready with two fourteen as well. Now, anyone is there anyone who has not uh, tried the two thousand thirteen MCQ paper? Okay, so it seems everyone has done that, right? Avonetra, that's a very good mark. Okay, uh, let me know your answers as well, people. And meanwhile, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you the 2013 marking scheme, so you can mark it and send me the incorrect answers, right? So. I hope everyone has done the 2013 paper. If you haven't done, just let me know. Then I can give you some time because since it is 4 6, there are 25 minutes. So I can give you some 10 15 minutes to do the first 15 questions. Then I can come and discuss those things. So if anyone is there who has not done the paper, just let me know. Ah, okay, Minut. Right. So, uh, yeah. Do you guys have the paper with you? Minul, do you got the paper with you? Right, we know uh, that's a very good mark. Himidiri, well done. You guys are doing good, people, right? Everyone, every like the the marks that I was receiving, all are in eighties and nineties, which is very good. And. Uh, Yeah, Minola, wait. I'm going to oh, 213. Yeah, oh my God. I got both the Sinhala papers over here. Let me, let me uh, download the 213 one. Hold on. Ah, it's okay, Mina. It's okay. Uh, so, no worries, Minha. No worries. So, like, uh, it's a it's a very good mark. Keep it up, Minha. So, like, uh, are you? Yes. Okay. Good. All right, so we started discussing the uh, 2013 
So for the first one, it's the second one is the answer. Right, so for the second one, it's the first one is the answer. X is going to be the operating system and Y is going to be the application software. And uh, for the third one, we took first one as the answer. CD has the lowest capacity and DVD has the next capacity and hard disk has the highest capacity. So the fourth one, a computer has a memory capacity of 4 GB, which of the following is equivalent to the RAM capacity. Okay, 4 GB means gigabyte converted into the megabytes. You need 1024 because 1024 megabytes are equal to the one gigabyte. So when it says four gigabytes, it's like four into 1024 megabytes. That means 4,096 megabytes. If it's going to be something, some unit lower than the megabyte, the number is going to be high. If it's going to be some unit larger than the uh, megabytes, so it's definitely the 4 GB. If it's goes to, goes to the terabyte, it's going to be some decimal values, right? Some floating point value is going to be there. So it's not the 4,096 KB, not the 4,096 bytes. It's the 4,096 megabytes, which is the third one. Fifth one, which of the following is more suitable as a primary key for a database table used for storing data about the books in a library. So they said book number, publisher, surname and author, surname of author, book title. So there can be books in same title. So that cannot be taken. Same author can write several different books. So that is disqualified. Same publisher will be able to publish different kinds of books. So the most appropriate answer is going to be the book number, the very first one. Sixth one, it says when a program is executed, instruction and data are directly brought into the central processing unit through the cache memory from the, then there is a blank, right? So uh, instruction and data are directly brought into the central processing unit through the cache memory. Uh, now it's going to be, uh, okay, since there is no registers, we are not getting a confusing answer. So things will be taken into the cache memory. Hold on, hold on. When a program is executed, instruction and data are directly brought into the central person unit through the cache memory. Yeah. Taken through the cache memory. But still, uh, they are taking the data from the RAM through the cache memory to the registers. So it's going to be the main memory, right? For the sixth one, third one is going to be the answer. Right, so main memory gets the uh, program or the processors from the hard disk, right? And seventh one, it says with the development of technology, the vacuum tubes were replaced by the transistors, which of the following is correct regarding the resultant changes to the computer. Speed decrease, no, by gener generation to generation, speed increase. So because of this, this is wrong. So here it says speed decrease again. So it is wrong clearly. Speed increase, power consumption decreases, yes, size, again decreases. So here it says size increased. So because of that, the fourth one is incorrect. The correct answer is the third one. Right, so moving to the eighth question, which of the following are correct regarding the programming languages? So, a program, a programs can be written using binary symbols. Yeah, that is 
how they have done it uh, in the very first era where they were using punch cards. So even though we can't write it using, we are not writing it is use, uh, using ones and zeros, it can represent using ones and zeros. So it's, they are asking uh, the correct one. So it's kind of a correct. Assembly language programs are converted to machine language programs using assembler, definitely a correct one. Programming is the third generation language. Programming in third generation language is easier than using assembly language. It is because third generation languages are the languages which we call, which we name as high level languages like Pascal that you have done. So it is easier for the programmer to quote from it because it is from English. So some particular language refers to things that we are doing. So B and C definitely are correct answers, but uh, for the part A, uh, we have a little bit doubt. What's the answer for this? Let me check, let me check. For the eighth one, for the eighth one, let me, let me check. 13. For the eighth one, they have taken four. So like this, this has, this is taken as true as well, right? So the eighth one is going to be the answer. In the ninth, it is asking which of the following is equivalent to 127.10. Yeah, now it is easy. 127.10, you have to divide 127 by two. So it will give you 63, one is remaining and again two, 31, one is remaining again two, 15, one is remaining again two, seven, one is remaining again two, three, one is remaining again by two, one and one is remaining. So we can start it from here and we can copy it. So that means uh, all are going to be one. So uh, do we have a, yeah, we don't have a binary value which equals to this, right? So this has a zero at the middle, this has the zero at the end. So first and the second is uh, gone. So for the octal, let's say, let's use the binary value to convert this into the octal. So seven ones will be there. And I'm going to divide it like this. So three ones for per group, and this one is alone. So these are the place values. Right, so four to one is going to give you seven as the output here. This is going to give you seven again, and this is going to give just the one. So 177 is going to be the answer. So it's the octal equivalent that we got. Yes, Minul, yes, I agree what you were saying. And again, Minul, like uh, when it comes to the ones and zeros, it's not actually written. They were using the punch cards. So it's better they say uh, uh, the programs were input as ones and zeros or something like that. It would be much better, right? So the ninth one, you are having an octal equivalent, which is 177 in octal, so it's going to be a one. And F and F is not going to be the uh, answer because if we convert this binary code into the hexadecimal, these things are going to be one, two, four, eight, which gives you a 15. 
and this is going to be one to four there is nothing for eight you can add a zero this is going to be seven so from hexadecimal it's going to be seven f right so answer is going to be the third one and for the tenth let's clean this yeah the tenth question the binary equivalent of a916 so it is easy we are going to write 9 in 4 bits and we are going to write a in 4 bits so 9 can be written as 1001. How we are going to write it by considering these place values 1, 2, 4, 8. So this is being written as 4 bit code. And in the same way, another 4 bit code which has 1, 2, 4, 8 place values for the A. So A means what? A means 10. So 10 can be taken as 1 and 1 over under 8 and 2. So these two places will be 0, 0. So the binary number is going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, double, 0, 1. So 1, 0, 1, 0, this is wrong. This is the answer. This is wrong and this is wrong as well. Right, so you can take two as the answer. Yeah, so those are the uh, values or answers for the first 10 questions. So you better try the rest of the questions at home people. So I'm going to end the session from this point since we've got another three minutes to go, right? So do the entire paper. We will be having a chance to discuss the entire paper by next week. So do the 2013 fully and get ready to discuss that on next Sunday. As well as if you got the time, try the 214 as well, right? So you are always advanced uh, than the, the paper that we are discussing, right? Okay, people, so I'm going to end the session from here. Thank you very much. I'll see you on next week for the very same time. That means 3.30 I'm going to meet you. Um, at the three o'clock I'm going to meet you, right? So get ready, people, right? We are discussing 2.13. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. And have a very nice weekend. I'll see you on next Sunday. Thank you. So on much. three o'clock. Right. Okay, people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.